Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how you can get your player to follow multiple spline paths that you can create within your level. So as you see here, I got a few of them laid out in this uh, template level here. And when the player overlaps any one of these collision spheres, you will see that they will follow that particular spline path. So we can start over here. And you see our player will follow this particular path. And when he gets to the end, if we turn around, we can now overlap this one and we'll be following a completely different spline path. Okay, so let me show you guys how we can create that. First, we're going to right click here in the content browser and we're going to go to Blueprint Class. We're going to create a new actor. We'll call this My Path. And we'll go into our third person character here. I'm going to delete all of this stuff. We will recreate everything together. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to right click and create a custom event. And we'll call this follow spline. And we'll give it one input. And the input will be a spline path. And we're going to search for my path. And we'll get an object reference here. And then we're going to right click here and promote this to a variable. We'll call it current spline path. And from here, we're going to want to hook this up to a timeline. call that path and we'll have this play from start the only thing we're going to need to do in here if we double click we'll just make sure this is set to loop we can go back to our event graph now and then we're going to need to create a few variables here so we're going to right click and say get world delta seconds and then we're going to go over here and create a variable we'll call it time and we'll make this a float and we're going to create another variable we will call distance this will also be a float and a third variable that we will call speed and this is going to determine how fast our player moves along the spline path so we'll grab our time and say get and what we're going to do is add a float to a float and we're going to add our world delta seconds to the time and then we're going to set our time here and hook this up to the timeline and once we have that we're going to grab our distance out hold alt and we'll set our distance and what we're going to set our distance to is going to be our time multiplied by another float and that float is going to be our speed here. And then we will hook this up into the distance. We can compile this and we'll set our speed to be something like 500. Then we're going to want to grab our um, spline path reference here. We'll say get. And now we're going to need to actually go into that actor. So we'll double click on my path here. And we'll add a component. We'll search for spline. And we want to get this utility here, spline. And we'll add one more component, which will be a sphere collision. And we'll scale this up by 5. And we can compile and save that. And now if we go into our event graph and we click on the collision sphere here, we can create an overlap event here on component begin overlap. And we're going to drag out from other actor and say cast to third person. All 
Okay. And then we're going to have a branch node here. And we're going to have this check to see if our third person character is currently on a spline path. So let's go back into our third person character. We'll create one more variable here. We'll say is on path. And we'll make this a boolean. We'll compile that. And we'll leave it as a default false. So now we can go back into our path. And we can pull out of our third person character is on path. And we'll have it check. And if it's true, we don't want it to do anything because it's already following a spline path. But if it's false, we'll grab this out. We'll say set is on path. And we'll make that true. We'll hook this up here. And then after that, we will call our follow spline function or uh, event here. So we'll grab out of our third person character, say call follow spline. And we'll hook that up like so. And then the spline path, we will just get a reference to self. And that's all we need to do in our spline path here. So we can compile and save. And we can close that out. And now we can come back into our third person character and off of this current spline path reference, we could say get spline. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see this variable. So we want to get that. And then we'll drag out of here and say get location at distance along spline. And we'll make sure this is in world, uh, the coordinate space. And the other thing we want is get rotation at distance along spline. Again, we want that in world space. And now we can drag out our distance. And we can plug distance into both of these. And the last thing we'll do is we'll get spline length. And this is how we know when to stop um, this timeline here from updating. So we will check greater than or equal to. And we want to see if our distance, so we'll move this to the bottom, is greater than or equal to our spline length. Now, after this set node here, we want to say set actor location and rotation. And the location we want will be this distance along the spline. And the rotation will be this here. And then after this, we're going to have a branch node. And we'll hook it up right after this set actor location and rotation here. And if this is true, what we're going to want to do is take is on path, hold alt, and we'll set that to false. And then we're going to want to stop our timeline. So if we right click here, we can create a custom event. And we'll just call this stop. And we'll hook that into the stop here. And then we will call that so that our timeline will stop updating our player location. And we'll drag out our distance and hold alt. We'll want to set the distance back to zero. And we're also going to want to set our time back to zero. This way the player can start from the beginning uh, distance and time on a new spline path. OK. And that's all we need to do here. So we'll compile and save. We'll minimize this. And we will throw in some of our paths here. Let me get rid of our other splines that we have. Just hit delete. And now I'll grab my path. And I'm going to go into top mode just because it makes it easier to drag out these splines. We'll right click here, duplicate spline point. Do this a few times. And you can just make whatever path you guys want. 
This is obviously just for testing purposes. And we'll go back to perspective mode. So now that I have one of these spline paths in the world, I'll just hit Control-C, Control-V to show you guys that you can make multiple of these control C, control V and have them wherever you want in the world. Rotate these things around a little bit. Okay, now we'll hit play. Oh. Let me actually make this visible so I can see where the splines are. And now if we hit play, if I run into one of these, you see it will follow that spline path. And when it's done, we can head over to another one and follow a different path. So this is how you guys can have multiple splines in your level. Um, I just killed our character. But yeah, so you guys can have multiple splines in the level and your player character will follow whichever one they're currently overlapping. Alright guys, I hope you thought that was helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more tutorials. Alright, see you guys later.